When was the last time you had a true sense of wonder in your life? And I don't mean the last time you filed your taxes. <laughs> See, I work as a magician. I've been doing magic for the past 10 years on business events, private parties and weddings. And usually, the first question that people ask me is, how did you do that? <laughs> and on the surface, it's a very understandable question to ask, isn't it? We're curious by nature. But have you ever noticed that when we were children, the whole world was a mystery to us? Why is the sky blue? And how can birds fly? I still don't know. <laughs> but when we've become adults, when was the last time you had this deep sense of wonder in your life? And I don't mean the last magic trick that you've seen. It has become rarer, hasn't it? But why? Where did all the wonder go? I think I know the answer to the question. And the answer is questions. Let me explain. The Oxford Dictionary defines wonder as a feeling of awe and amazement caused by something remarkable, unfamiliar, and unique. That means a sense of wonder comes into existence when we have questions about the world, but we don't know the answers to those questions. And I think somewhere along the line, from being children to growing up, we stopped asking profound questions about the world. And I think that happened for two reasons. The first one is, we don't have to. We have a job, we have family obligations, we live comfortable lives. We don't need to know everything about the world. We just need to know what we need to know. And the second reason I think is even more profound. The second reason is we get discouraged from asking these questions. Maybe a teacher, you ask him a question. What does the teacher say? Well, that's a stupid question. <laughs> or you ask your parents, and the parents say, well, I don't know. Who cares? And then we stop asking these questions. And when we stop asking the questions, the wonder goes with them. And that's the power of magic. It can reintroduce the sense of wonder into our lives by making us question our perception, what we've seen. Did, I, did he really just do that? That's impossible. It's a very precious feeling, but it can also be very, very powerful. And the story I'm about to tell you, I'm not telling you this story to show off. It serves merely to illustrate a point. And it's a true story that happened to me three years ago when I received a phone call from a client of mine who wanted me to do magic for a nine-year-old boy named Luke. And Luke was dying of leukemia, and he was too weak to leave the house. And so I said, of course I'm going to do magic for the boy. And so the next day, I went to his house, and I was greeted by the two parents. And they were visibly upset. And especially the mother was so distressed I tried to comfort her and I said, you know, I am sure your son will get well again. She just looked at me with this look I'd never seen before, without hope, of utter defeat. And she said the most chilling words I'd ever heard. She said, no, I don't think so. When a mother tells you that her only child is going to die of cancer, that stays with you. And so with that in the back of my mind, I went upstairs to see the boy. And he was lying on a mattress. And you could see he was very weak and very frail. And I started to perform for him. And suddenly, his eyes lit up. He started to smile. He said, Dad, can you lift me up? I want to see the magic. Everything I did, he wanted to try out himself. He wanted to examine everything. He was a very intelligent young boy. I still remember seeing the pure joy in his eyes when I performed for him. And I'm sure that in that moment, he forgot that he had cancer. He forgot that he was sick, and he could just feel like a normal child again, even if just for those few moments. I still remember the first trick I showed him. I took out one of these little red balls from behind his ear. 
and I made two. And when I started doing this, his eyes lit up. And he said, I want to do the same. And I said, here, yeah, sure. Open your hands. No, both of them. And when I gave him the ball in his hand, What you feel now is what the boy felt. And I think it's a very, very precious feeling, which I think we should have more often in our lives. Now, I'm sure some of you may ask yourself, well, Philip, why on earth do I need a sense of wonder in my life? I'm fine. And I would reply to that, that sense of wonder in our lives can give us maybe a new perspective on life, maybe even add more color, maybe even a little bit more meaning. Now, you don't need to see a magic trick every time you want to experience this. That would be a bit weird and a little bit unpractical. <laughs> but I would encourage you to ask more profound questions about the world and enjoy the sense of not knowing. You don't have to be afraid of it, but the awe and amazement that can be inspired within you is, is just wonderful. When I look up at the sky full of stars at night, I wonder are we alone in the universe? And I don't know. But I enjoy the profound sense of awe and wonder that comes with not knowing. I asked earlier, where did all the wonder go? Turns out, it never left. We have simply forgotten to look for it. Thank you.